Hello everybody, I'm George Rouse from Archery Learning Center and I'm here to show you the technique that you can use to fire an UltraView button. And actually, the same technique can be used to fire a hinge as well. So, here's how this works. It's not just as simple as just mashing the button to make the release fire. What we're trying to do is use form in order to activate the release. The pressure that you create with your form at full draw makes the bow stable and it fires the release. Now there's a certain training technique that you can use to marry those two things together and learn and understand what you're going to do with the hinge before you actually shoot your bow at a distance at a target, right? It's really important to learn how to use it and what you're going to do with it before you shoot at targets because it's really hard to figure it out while aiming at the same time. It's a great way to learn some bad habits. It'll take a while to get rid of. Here's how this works. I'm just using just a piece of string and step one, you'll just use a piece of string, right? And you'll learn how to balance your fingers in the release and figure out the fit that you want with your thumb. And notice I'm using the square peg here. And you notice when I put my thumb there, I'm putting a little bit of meat in front of the thumb trigger. Rather than just placing my thumb on top like this, I'm putting it in front because this trigger actuates in this direction. So when I put my thumb on, and I'm gonna hold my thumb away just so you can see how it works. Here's the technique that you'll use. When I'm pulling with pressure, if I let my palm elongate with that pressure, do you see how the relationship between my thumb and the button changes, right? The fingers here are staying stable in the release. I'm not letting go of the release, right? I'm just letting my palm get longer. And because my thumb is mounted at the base, and if I draw the bow back with just a little bit of spring tension, see your power center is around your index finger, right? Like this. So when I draw the bow back, that will kind of compress just a little. So when I just place my fingers in the release, then my thumb matches right there. So that little bit of compression, if I let that yield to the pressure at full draw, that makes that fire that'll make it a lot easier to pull against the hinge and actuate the trigger in a straight line with the X-ring so that as you pull or wing your elbow or pinch your shoulder blades together, it's not actually dragging the pin out of the middle of the target, okay? So here's kind of what it looks like. Here's a close view. I'm gonna show you how it goes. I'll put my thumb over. And then as I extend, the release fires. And as you see, I'm showing you with some pretty big motion here, right? I'm showing you big motion like this, but the reality of it is it's very small. It's very microscopic. And as I stretch, you done correctly, you really can't see any movement happening here, but you can feel that pressure exchange work. So let's compare to the hinge. So I'm going to do the same thing with the hinge, right? You see my fingers are in it the same way. And as I let that stretch, you see the hinge clicks. I let it stretch a little more and the hinge fires. It works the same way. You can see how, if I exaggerate, you can see how the hinge will rotate as I let that stretch, right? And if I pull this out in a straight line, you can see as I stretch, the line stays stable with the target. I'll show you that again. I'll do it with the hinge. I draw, it clicks as I anchor, and it goes. Let me do that again. That one fired a tad bit soon. Go here, there, and you see the line stays stable. Let me show you that same angle with the button. 
Same angle with the button. I hook my thumb, I anchor, and as I stretch, the release fires. Done that way with the button and the hinge, they'll both hit in the same hole. That's one thing. So you can work on your shot execution back and forth between the two. But this is the basic technique that I've told you. That stretching of the palm to make the release fire is the basic technique. So to learn this, you'll need to get a piece of string like what I've got here and hold it rather than hold it up here like a bow. Instead, hold it down here where you can see what you're doing and you can see and feel at the same time. So I can watch my hand working on the release so I can understand and connect that feel by watching it happen as well. So step one, you figure out the technique and get it under control and get it working. And then you will do repetitions of this. When I first learned this technique and as soon as I switched to a, a ultra view button, I walked around with a string in my pocket and the release. And anytime my hands were empty, instead of whipping my phone out and checking Instagram, I got my release and my string out and I stand there and watch TV or I talk to customers here in the shop. I'm giving archery lessons. And since my hands are empty, I'm learning and practicing my release aid technique, right? So the next step in learning this release, you'll have to combine that with your archery form. So you'll use your string long like you are shooting a bow. And this stage, it'll be important to look in a mirror so you can see how your shoulders look, what the line looks like, an anchor, and you can work on archery form at the same time while looking in the mirror. That'll allow you to see and feel. Right. So as you go along and it's I can't stress enough how many repetitions of this that you should do. Everybody always asks, how many times do I need to do this? Well, you need to do it until you can't get it wrong. It takes as many times as it takes. Really, I can't accurately give you a number, but to, to put some perspective on it, I'm going to say thousands of times. The more of this that you do, the more basics that you work on, the more bulletproof your technique will be. You have to be strong in the basics before you can have your most accurate and most highest scores in a tournament, right? So the next step is you'll go to the bow and the bow will feel a significant amount different from the shooting string. So there's a few form things that you'll do with the bow. Let me grab a bow up here. What you do, I've set my bow. I used to set my bow like right here on my hip. And that makes, gives me access to my D loop. Just make sure my arrow is on the rest, engage the release. And then I can set the release in the D loop like this. And I can look at my hand while I'm placing my fingers into the release because consistent hand placement in the release is important because if your fingers are too deep, the release will work slowly. If your fingers are too shallow, there'll be too much hand tension and it'll be hard to make it shoot. So finding that right in the middle where your forearms can be somewhat soft, yet the release still works, you have to look at it and place that. And then lastly, I'll check with my thumb to make sure that my hand and extension is correct. So I go, okay, my thumb fits just as it should. And then I'll just take my thumb off and I'll leave my hand in this shape until I'm at full draw. The next thing I'll do is place my hand in the bow just the way that I want it to be. Then I'll set myself, put my nose on the target, settle my chest, then pick the bow up, draw it back, level, pin on the target, and peep to my eye. When I do that pin on the target, peep to eye, that sets the shot up on the bullseye so the pressure is aligned with the target. 
So as I pull on the bow or increase pressure between me and the bow, it doesn't drag the side out of the middle, so it stays stable as the pressure increases. Be sure to use the string up close, stretch the string out like a bow, shoot your bow on the blank bail first to get the feel right, do it until you can't get it wrong, then put a target up at very close range. This is the point where you incorporate aiming into the whole routine. We figured out release aid technique. Now we need to figure out how to let aim work with the technique. So at seven yards or so, so your 20 yard pin still hits in the middle and you will shoot game after game after game after game until it's just absolute perfection and the release pops with a very fast pace. Once you've mastered that, move the target two more yards. And that increases the aiming difficulty a tiny amount so you can maintain technique and get let aim become under control. You'll master that, move the target two more yards away, get that under control, slowly and incrementally walk the target back to the full distance, 20 yards with a 40 centimeter face, walk it back to the full distance, and you should have incorporated a really good release aid technique that you can use at 20 yards that'll be reliable and you can depend on it. One final thing, I'm gonna help you avoid a trap. If you're in the middle of an event and suddenly your release won't work, it just won't fire, it's not the release that changed, it's you. So the last thing you want to do is take out your Allen wrenches and speed the release up. What you'll want to do is remind yourself, get a little deep in the release, use, be a little bit more heavy handed and just keep moving. That'll make sure that you're actually shooting the bow instead of holding the bow. You can get lessons with me and I'll personally show you how to do all of this. If you go to improvemyarchery.com, we can do remote lessons on Zoom or you can come right in here to the shop and we'll do it face to face. Improvemyarchery.com. Come get your shot right. Let's shoot some good scores this year.